All right, welcome back. The chain rule is a rule for derivatives that allows us to take the derivative of composite functions. Now, if you don't remember what a composite function is, I'm gonna quickly go over that before I introduce the chain rule. And so if you wanna skip right to the chain rule, you can use our chapters on this video to get right to the rule so you can start practicing it. But let's first talk about what composite functions are and when we need to use the chain rule. And so a composite function is basically when we have one function inside of another function. So for example, here we have f of x and g of x, where g of x is inside of f of x. And sometimes we would call them inner and outer functions, where f of x is the outer function and g of x is our inner function. So for example, if we had the function f of x is equal to the square root of x, and we had the function g of x is equal to x cubed plus 2, the composite function f of g of x would be equal to that square root of x, but now this x would be replaced with our function g of x because we were plugging the function g of x into f of x. That's what this composite notation means. So inside our square root here, or our square root of x, we are going to have x cubed plus two. And this would be our composite function in this case. And so when we have composite functions like this and we want to take the derivative of them, we are going to have to use the chain rule. But let me quick show you some more examples of composite functions so you know exactly when to use the chain rule and when you don't need to use it. All right, so here I have some side-by-side -side functions that are gonna help us see when we would use the chain rule versus not using the chain rule. So on the left side here, we have our functions that do not require the chain rule to take a derivative. And on the right side, we have the functions that will require it. And so let's take a look at our first one here. We have y equals four x plus nine. We don't need to use the chain rule for this function because it's not a composite function. We could take a derivative of this function by using the power rule for four x and the constant rule for nine. But if we look on the other side, we have y equals the quantity 4x plus 9 cubed. Now we have a composite function where we need to use the chain rule to take the derivative. And so in this case, our inner function would be 4x plus 9, and our outer function would be x cubed, right? If we were to plug the quantity 4x plus 9 into x cubed, we would result in this function. And because of that, this is a composite function that we would need to use the chain rule to take a derivative of. Now, if we look at the function y equals cosine x, well, we know that the derivative of cosine x is just negative sine x, so clearly we don't need to use the chain rule for this function. But if we have a different function inside the cosine function, such as 8x over here, right, we have y equals cosine of 8x, now we need to use the chain rule to take a derivative of this because it's a composite composite function, where in this case our inner function is going to be that 8x and our outer function is cosine x. If we plugged 8x into cosine x, we would result in this composite function right here. And in our last one, we have y equals x to the fourth power minus one. And for this one, we also do not need to use the chain rule because we could use the power rule to take the derivative of x to the fourth and then the constant rule for this one. But if you look at this function, we have y equals the square root of x to the fourth power minus one. We now have a composite function where we will now have to use the chain rule to take its derivative. And so in this case, the inner function would be x to the fourth minus one, and our outer function would be the square root of x. If we plug the quantity x to the fourth power minus one into the square root of x, we would have this composite function right here. So hopefully this was helpful for you to see what exactly are composite functions and when we would need to use the chain rule if we wanted to take their derivatives. But now let's take a look at what the chain rule actually is. All right, so here is our chain rule. The chain rule says that if we wanna take the derivative of a composite function, such as f of g of x, right, where f of x is our outer function and g of x is our inner function, then it's going to be equal to the derivative of our outer function, f prime of whatever is inside of it, so we don't touch that inner function, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. And so let's look in an example to see how this works in action. Let's say I wanted to take the derivative, or d dx, of the function x plus one squared. And we would want to use the chain rule in this case because this is a composite function. We have an inner function and an outer function. In this case, our outer function is going to be f of x is equal to x squared, and our inner function 
would be g of x is equal to x plus 1. And so you can see that if I were to plug g of x into f of x, we would have x plus 1 squared, right? So that is where this function would come from. And so if we want to take the derivative of this, we want to keep this in mind that we have our outer function x squared and our inner function x plus 1, and we can go through and do this process. And so what does this look like? Well, this is going to be equal to the derivative of our outer function. So our outer function is this squared quantity. And so what we're going to do is use the power rule for this part of our function. So we are going to have that 2 times whatever is within that part of the function. So in this case, x plus 1. That stays the same. And then we continue on with our power rule, and we subtract 1 from our exponent. That is this first part of our chain rule. We just take the derivative of our outer function, which in this case is technically x squared, but with this inner function inside of it. And then we will multiply by the derivative of our inner function, which is x plus 1. In this case, the derivative of x plus 1 is just going to be 1, because the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So 1 plus 0 would just be 1. And then we can simplify, and we would have that our derivative here is equal to 2 times x plus 1. And if we wanted to, we could distribute that 2 and have 2x plus 2. But either one of these answers would be correct in this case. And so hopefully that gives you a good idea of an easy example of where we would use the chain rule and how it works. But let's look at some more examples to really nail down how to use the chain rule. All right, so for our next example, we want to find the derivative of sine of 9x. So this is going to be a composite function where we are going to want to use the chain rule. Now you'll see I have the chain rule referenced here at the bottom so that we can see it as we go through these examples. And I have written it in two different ways for you to kind of think about. And one is the actual rule itself. And the other one is a little trick to help us remember what the chain rule is as we do it. So we have a rule here and then we can think of it as the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So let's go through this example and get some more practice using this chain rule. So first, let's identify what our outer and inner functions are. And in this case, our outer function is going to be sine x. So we can write that outer is going to be sine x. And then our inner function is going to be this 9x right here. So we will then have that the inner is 9x. So now let's go through the derivative process using this chain rule. This derivative is going to be equal to the derivative of our outside function. So the derivative of sine x, which in this case is going to be cosine x. So what we have to do though is remember to still write that inner function within the derivative of our outer function. So we're going to have cosine of 9x. So we do not change that inner function of 9x at all. We just take the derivative of the outside and include the inside within that derivative. So that's why we have cosine 9x. And then we're going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside function, which we said was 9x. So we just take the derivative of 9x, which would just be 9. So we're going to have 9 multiplied by our cosine 9x. And then we can simplify. And this is going to be equal to 9 times cosine 9x. And if this looks a little confusing, you can always add these parentheses here to kind of help you see your different functions. But that would be the answer or the derivative to sine of 9x. Let's take a look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we want to find the derivative of the square root of x squared plus 3. And this is another composite function where we are going to want to use the chain rule because our outer function is this square root function and the inside function is x squared plus 3. So let's quickly write that down and then we'll go through with our derivative using the chain rule. So we said that the outer function is the square root of x and the inner function is x squared plus 3. So hopefully you can see that x squared plus 3 plugged into the square root of x would give us this function. This is a composite function with this outer function and this inner function. So now let's go through the derivative process. This is going to be equal to the derivative of our outside function, right? The outer function we take the derivative of first. But actually, before we do that, if you remember, when we took the derivative of square root functions, specifically the square root of x, we'd like to rewrite it as x to the 1 half power. So we will do the same here. We will redefine this function so we can more easily see how we're going to actually take the derivative of our outside function. So this is going to be equal to the derivative of 
x squared plus 3 to the 1 half power. That is going to be the same function as this function, right? The square root of a quantity is the same as taking that quantity to the 1 half power. So now we're ready to take our derivative. This is going to be equal to the derivative of that outside function, which now we can see a lot more easily how to use our power rule to do that. So we're going to have 1 half times x squared plus 3, right? We took our exponent and we multiplied it by our quantity and then we're going to subtract one from our exponent. So one half minus one. And then we want to multiply by the derivative of our inside function, which in this case is x squared plus three. And a derivative of x squared is going to be two x, right? So we'll have two x, and then a derivative of three is zero. So plus zero leaves us with just two x. And so that is going to be the derivative of our inside function. So now we can simplify. I'm going to see that we have this 1 half and this 2 that are going to cancel out to be just 1. So we will have that this is equal to just this x multiplied by this quantity. So we'll have x times x squared plus 3 to the negative 1 half power, right? 1 half minus 1 would be negative 1 half. And then we can redefine this function to be equal to x divided by x squared plus 3 to the 1 half power, right? We move this quantity to the denominator so that the exponent would no longer be negative. And then, of course, we can rewrite this one more time to have x over the square root of x squared plus 3, right? We can redefine this 1 half power to be the square root. And so this will be the final answer or our derivative to the square root of x squared plus 3. All right, so for our next example, we wanna find the derivative of sine squared x. Now this one's a little bit tricky because of the notation of this function. So it might initially be unclear about what our inside function and our outer function are in this case. You might be tempted to say that our outer function is sine x, but then that is a little confusing because then what is our inner function? So let's rewrite this function because it actually is a lot more clear if we redefine it. So this is going to be equal to the derivative of that sine function squared, right? This is the same thing as this. This is just a nice way to write the square of the sine function, which is a lot nicer to write than sine x squared with these parentheses. But these are the same function. And so now we can see a lot easier what our inside function and outside functions are. And so in this case, our sine function is actually the inner function and x squared is going to be our outer function. So I'll write that down real quick. We have that our outer, is x squared and our inner is sine x. So now we're ready to take our derivative using the chain rule. So this is going to be equal to the derivative of the outside function, which we said was x squared. So we're gonna bring down that exponent two times our quantity of sine x. Remember, do not change that inside function when you're taking the derivative of the outside function. Leave it as it is. And then we're going to subtract one from our exponent, just like we do when we normally use the power rule. And then we will take the derivative of the inside function, right? That's the next part of our chain rule. And our inside function is sine x, and we know that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So then we would multiply by cosine x. All right, and so now we can simplify, and we will have that this is equal to two times sine x, right? It's just gonna be sine x to the first power because two minus one is one, and then we will also have this multiplied by cosine x. And so then that is the answer or the derivative to our sine squared x function. We just have two times sine x times cosine x. Let's look at one more final example for this video. All right, so for our last example, we wanna find the derivative of negative three divided by 2x plus 5 quantity squared. Now, you might look at this and say, well, hey, that looks like a quotient rule problem, not a chain rule. Well, that's true. You could use the quotient rule to solve this derivative, but actually a chain rule would be an easier way to find this derivative. And let me show you why. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna redefine this function. What I'm going to do is move this quantity up to the top and have a negative exponent. And so let me do that and then I'll talk about why we did that. So this will be equal to the derivative of negative three times two x plus five to the negative second power. So 
The reason I did this is because in our numerator here or in the top, we didn't have any variables, right? We didn't have any X's. If we did and we made this maneuver, we would then have a product rule instead of a quotient rule. So we really wouldn't have made our lives too much easier, especially because we'd still have to use a chain rule because the denominator from our original function is a composite function. But in this case, it's just a constant up here. And so now we just have a constant times the derivative of a composite function, right? We have this two X plus five quantity and that's going to be one function. And then we have another function, which would be X to the negative two power or this quantity to that negative second power. And so remember when we take derivatives of functions, we can always pull out that constant, right? This would be equal to negative three times the derivative of two X plus five to the negative second power. And so we can completely ignore that negative three for now and just go through our chain rule. And we already said that our outer function is going to be X to the negative second power and our inner function would then be two X plus five. So now we can go through and take the derivative of this function. This is going to be equal to that negative three multiplied by our chain rule process. And that's gonna start with the derivative of our outer function. So we're gonna have the power rule here. We're gonna have negative two times our quantity 2x plus 5. Remember, do not change that inner function. We're only taking the derivative of the outside function right now, and then we'll subtract 1 from our exponent, which just follows along with our power rule. And now we will multiply by the derivative of our inside function, which is 2x plus 5. And the derivative of that is just going to be 2 plus 0, right? The derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of 5 would be 0. So we're multiplying just by 2, and then that would be the end of our chain rule process. And so now we can go through and simplify. We can multiply this negative three by this negative two and this two. So we'll have negative three times negative two is positive six. And then six times this positive two would be 12. So we'll have this is equal to 12. And then that's all gonna be multiplied by this quantity. So we'll have two X plus five to the negative third power, right? Negative two minus one would be negative three. And then finally we can simplify and we can say that this is equal to 12 divided by 2x plus 5 to the third power. We just moved that quantity with a negative exponent to our denominator, so now it has a positive exponent. And that is how we find a derivative of this function. All right, so that's the last example for this lesson video. If you wanna see some more examples, if you wanna practice using the chain rule more, I will have an example video linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. So feel free to check those out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you do not have any questions, then that's all I have for now, and I will see you next time.